we watched the TV episode for the purposes of this bonus episode. We watched the TV episode based on Killer's Choice. We'll come to that in a minute. Let's do our usual on the book covers, because me and Steve-O have both got um, the Penguin edition from 1963. 1972. Okay. Oh. Quite jealous. Oh, hang on, let me just write. Oh yeah, 1972, my apologies. First published in Britain in 1963. This is the 1972 edition. And our editions have got the... I really like the design of this. This is where the uh, the Green Spine Penguin Crime series has got some really interesting artwork. Cover designed by Alan Spain, photographed by Don Hunstein. And I was looking up Don Hunstein. I did put this on the Twitter feed mm. and on the Facebook page. And Don Hunstein was a guy who took tons of photos used for album covers. Mm. Loads of really, really famous sleeves, particularly um, freewheeling Bob Dylan. Ah, yeah. And so... I was really excited about this and then very sorry to find that he had died not long ago. But his photo documents of New York are presumably why he was doing these covers or these are from those photo documents mm. possibly and they've been like optioned to be the covers for it's like, these editions. It's like a totally deserted street downtown New York. Yeah, it which like. makes it a fantastic photograph. Mm, you know, it's, yeah, you, it's you don't tremendous. often see an empty New York Street. With three, four red splodges. Yeah, so that it's got some graphic design of supposed, I presume, bullet holes. Yeah. And a sort of weird 87th Precinct sign mm. stuck on the side of it mm. in a funny mm. way. Your book smells quite good. Oh, you're going to compare smells of additions? Mine's more pungent. Oh, no, I'm going to have to compare <laughs> you, you, you can test for yourself. I'm going to compare the same pages. This makes so, great so listening. Page, page 76 of my edition. Oh. I can assure you 76 smells. Well, I don't know. I, I prefer mine. It's very subjective, though, isn't it? Book scent. Oh. I started reading The Shape of Things to Come by H.G. Wells yesterday. Oh, yeah. And I opened it up and took a good whiff. <laughs> oh. it, took yeah. me back to 1936. Are you at the London Conference or whatever it is? I've, I got only about 12 that, pages in before I fell asleep. That, yeah, it's quite that, difficult to get going. That's one pretty crackers book, a, a pretend <laughs> non-fiction of the future. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Yeah. I was a bit tired last <laughs> yeah, night to no, start it, really. Yeah, it is good, yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow, that's beside the way. Um, the real thing we're coming to is Morgan's edition of this book. Oh, mm. oh it's so exciting. Oh, so it's jazzy. Do, and, we've never uh, seen one like this. No. Well, the, the 1999 Allison and Busby edition. Who and the what what's? <laughs> I, I have never seen that style in any shop ever, even that book or any other, have you? You, you can see why it didn't last very long, <laughs> because it's, it looks terrible. If you didn't know that Ed McBain was was amazing, you really wouldn't pick up this book based on this cover because it's no. the font's awful. Lowercase letters for the title. There was, was about four fonts on that cover. Yeah, all of them really bad. Um, and the picture, oh, it's some broken glass. Well, broken glass does figure in the book at oh, least. Yeah. Or, or it looks like somebody who's just de-iced their car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Strange, isn't it? Yeah. Very strange. Um, but yeah, the 1999 Allison and Busby edition purchased from a car boot sale in Cockermouth, Cumbria. Um, so, with a, a, some weird little an stamp. intriguing stamp. An intriguing on stamp on the, uh, the first, oh, after, uh, first page. They look like... Do you think it's an ex-library? No, it's not ex-library because it would have a big torn bit where they took it's the like magic. thing off. like and stamp. Well, you people against goodness and normality on the subject of dragnet. It's the exact size, I would say, of a two pence piece. But um, I don't know, something that's some very, flowers. very peculiar. Mm. I wonder why then that this publisher had the rights to do. They had the right, from what I can gather, they had the rights to um, a number of them, but not the whole series. So I think they, judging from the the adverts in the back, they reissued quite a few sort of late 50s, early 60s uh, titles. But yeah. um, I, I think the same publisher actually did uh, the uh, edition, oh. the, the, the more recent editions that I've got uh, some of the other novels in, including the next one, Killer's Payoff. And they're, Well, they're quite uh, popular, aren't they? They're yeah. quite common, the Killer's Payoff style. Mm-hmm. Um, 
this this version that you've got reeks to me of someone who's just got like a, a you know a desktop publishing package <laughs> and got like the, the choice of fonts. I don't even like the actual typeface it's set in. It's not great. Maybe maybe that is what put me off slightly, and that's why I've got this negative impression, of, re- relatively negative, I should say, impression of the novel. Yeah, well, never judge a book by its cover, but when you pick that up, you, you did. You, you, I, I did. I actually. <laughs> They've did. chosen a color as well for the for the title of it. Set against the background that you can barely see. Yeah, lime green and grey. What a colour scheme. It's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, so we'll have to put a picture of that up because it has to be seen to be believed. If it's even photographicable, because it's... <laughs> it can be flanked by our old... old um, old edition. Yeah, yeah, our um, well, not overall yourself. attractive... They look like proper books. Got some it's... nice graphic design on yeah. it. Someone who's heard of uh, Two and design. six... Two and six, yes, that's how much oh, I yeah. was. How much did, was yours retailing for? Five ninety nine. Five ninety nine for that. Five ninety nine for that. Although I think I paid twenty p from said car boots. Well, we were checking our prices. Mine cost three pounds. Mine um, cost two pound eighty. Oh, so I got the bargain. You got the you but... got the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you got the difference between the two. Um, Cheap, cheaper, but its NAF cover has permanently tainted your, <laughs> your uh, bookshelves. Impress- look impression worse of for the it. book. That's true. And yeah, I have not really looked at the spine either. Oh, that's not. Good. Oh no. Anyway, let's move on from that. This is this is too distressing. Yeah, yeah. We watched the, the the TV adaptation of this, which of course has the the downside of not having the character of Cotton Hawes in it. They have to keep Roger Haviland alive because he's one of the main members of the cast, and they have to do it all in fifty minutes an hour or whatever it is. Oh, do you think Cotton Hawes is never introduced into that? No, series? I don't think he's in. I think the cast that we've seen in the episodes we've watched is it. Mm. Hi there. Groff Conklin here. You might be wondering why the ghost of a long dead science fiction anthologies editor has popped up on this little podcast to talk to you. Well, I come from beyond the grave to fact check. That's right. I certainly wouldn't have created science fiction adventures in mutation if I was the kind of editor who let facts slip by the by. So, I'm going to tell you about some of the things the boys got wrong. First, This isn't the only episode based on this book. There's one much later in the series of the 87th Precinct called New Man at the Precinct. And that's all about cotton hauls. It's all about someone going through a glass window. By the way, when you're a ghost, you come from everywhere. Your accent does what it pleases. Okay, I'll be back later on, fill you in on some more facts. Well, they've well, they clearly softened Haviland's character down because he's the guy who's telling, refusing to take the bribes for the. Yeah, that, that's very out of character for him, isn't it? And of course, it? in the book, that scene is basically an, one of the other cops. Well, so it's one of Haviland's. Uh, yeah, it's Haviland's. Yeah, he's already payoff. on the take for it. Yeah, just to remind the reader that you shouldn't feel too sorry for, for, for poor old Rog. So yeah. It was interesting. Our favourite sequence, I think, was the phone call to the hotel manager, which basically, oh, yeah. which basically had the guy just going, "Yes, <laughs> oh yes, oh, very yes. attractive red dress, oh yes." That was uh, one a.m. That was just a strange. You know, it's very difficult to do, you know, a phone call sequence in films anyway. Because it does involve either lots of cutaways or some person just on one end of a phone listening to either that cartoon <laughs> noise or nothing at all. Mm. Just going, uh-huh, I see. Yes. Okay. Um, that was quite good. They, they, yeah, I think it was a classic example of taking a complicated plot, realising you had to make it more simple, but not quite getting it right, really. Mm. I don't think it served this story, which I know we haven't rated particularly highly in our main episode, but I think they managed to do it a disservice. Mm. Yeah, ridic- rid- rid- they kind of tinker around, tinkered a- around with bits that made make make the plots quite interesting. Yeah. To make it kind of, I don't know, like overly too simplistic. You know, 50 minutes is a fair amount of time to... Have a quite a they lot of perhaps... uncertainty up mm. in the air, whereas they kind of hummed in on the prime suspect after about five minutes, yeah, <laughs> and then introduced a few more possibles, and then <laughs> got back to the beginning. I don't know, a bit odd, really. Too many flashbacks. 
If the <laughs> flashbacks were hilarious. I've never seen a programme that's had that many flashbacks in it. And there were certain ones, because it was always... Flash... It was always, yeah. like, uh, preceded by the famous going backwards in time noise, the, the vibes, yeah. all the, the wobbly frame and everything. But there was, like, bits where that happened, but they, the, they left the vibe music playing for ages. <laughs> well, they came back in one bit, and then we were back in somebody else's yeah. memory about three <laughs> seconds later. It was, yeah, it could have all been... It's about, like, the 1960s version of Inception by the end of it. <laughs> they'd, also it nas- just been... they'd also nastied up her character a lot, <laughs> whereas... Didn't... The book's more vague about her about Annie, a moral, Annie Boo. her moral, yeah, compass. Could, really, in, in the book, she she does appear to have come across as a completely different person to everyone. Whereas they tried to do that in the TV version, but actually she just came across as like a horrible, horrible person. Yeah, she was just to a, absolutely a, everyone. Yeah, she was just horrible to different people for different reasons yeah. and different motives. But yeah, in the book, she's not. Yeah, she's not horrible. She's just like, yeah, different. Yeah, and she doesn't therefore... necessarily make any sense in the book. No, but no. She's just a lot more sympathetic, I think. Mm, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of an odd one. And why do they change the name? I mean, it's unless, not like, it's not like there's another character in that TV series called Annie that you're going right. to get confused with. So why change your name to Amy? You just wonder whether it's uh, the, the particular time they were doing it. There was somebody in the news or somebody in the public consciousness yeah, with possibly, that possibly. Christian name. It must be. It, there must be some reason, yeah. and, and that's the only reason I can think of. Because if you had to, but then if you really had to change it, well, you just change it totally, wouldn't you? Mm. Not to something that just looks like some. Well, that's the only thing. It looks like if someone's written the word Annie really bad handwriting. <laughs> just written it down. Then someone might read and go, "Hey, yeah. Amy." Well, you don't really have to. Say, yeah. But say you you, you were dramatising something now with the first Christian name Teresa or something, you'd be like. <laughs> Oh yeah, you wouldn't yeah, want that in well, it necessarily. Well, you know, Tracy, you know, it'd be simple as that because yeah. it requires minimal thought mm. to change somebody's name from, you know, with same letter and same Christian name. But uh, it must be that. I, I, yeah. It must be. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I also didn't really understand why they changed um, the victim's mother's character. Yeah, because that was because in the book that sort of. Acts to muddy the plot and throw, but still throw suspicion on someone, make it more of a challenge for the police. Yeah, mm. yeah. Whereas in this, they just it, it's a bit more black and white of of her basically saying that guy will be the killer. Yeah, because yeah, in the book, the fact that because uh, they're the he, they're the first port of call, and the fact that the mother and the uh, the ex husband are saying totally different things makes it just weird from the outset mm, yeah. whereas in this yeah you just you just didn't get that at it's all it's not a sophisticated adaptation i wouldn't say and that's no. certainly true they they've taken a lot of the basic elements and kept it basic yeah but you know still quite nice performances oh, yeah. throughout i mean you can't fault robert lansing he's a, a, a mesmerizing screen presence i would say yeah. although the others don't really get that much to do in this one no no maya's just trotted out to be a little bit barbed now and again. I think the uh, the star support uh, goes to the the pool guy. I thought, oh, yeah. I thought, I thought oh, he was I thought yeah, he was particularly cool. good. I think they've renamed, did a lot renamed with his him small from the book. Yeah, they did. They did because in the book he doesn't run the bar either. He's just a just someone just, who's involved in a craps game. Yeah, and a, well, and the craps. pool hustler, isn't he? Oh, yeah. uh, whereas in this, they made him into the manager of the pool hall for some. I don't know why that helped the plot at all. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, in the book, he's he's not, he's not particularly a suspect in the book. He's just a another way of uh, of her, getting another a, layer, to another her. contrasting um, sort of take on a character. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in the TV episode where he gets two flashbacks within yeah. just seconds of each other, it's like, why have we come back from this? Just you know, just stay in the past. Well, you can't live in the past forever. Sometimes you need to go into the present or even the mysterious future. So it's interesting, though, isn't it? Keep watch to be able to watch is, some yeah, of these yeah, early yeah, ones yeah, after we've read the book. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, and we definitely must do soon a, is that uh, a podcast good? on one of the ones that's not uh, a book as well. Oh, right, okay. But Ooh, I think yeah. I think there's a version of Killer's Payoff. I was, was going to say that was my question. I would have to check. I don't have the answer now. 
Maybe I'll do insert a little cutaway once I've found out the information. Do a flashback next time. <laughs> <laughs> Graf Conkley back again for you with a fact. And that fact is, Killer's Payoff was an episode of the 87th Precinct. And the truth of the matter is, it was broadcast on the 6th of November, 1961. Once again, my ghost accent has gone crazy. Of course, that was about the time I was editing Diabetics Unknown, 1961's best book about unknown diabetics. Now, back to the podcast. And here we are, back in the present. Now we know. So, with that, that's the end of the bonus episode. We look forward to uh, having you join us again for Killer's Payoff and whatever rubbish we come up with to surround that as well. So, um, I'm going to say goodbye now. Goodbye now. Goodbye. And goodbye. Goodbye.